I have a confession to make. You see, I have a small addiction to being in nature. It's when I truly feel alive and content. I love cycling, hiking, camping, scuba diving. I still remember the first time I scuba dived, how I felt back then. Being on the water with all the colorful fish swimming in their natural environment. I was like a kid in an amusement park full of toys. Didn't know what to play with. So I naturally started swimming after the fishes trying to identify each one of them. Only to be startled by somebody banging on my head from behind. So I turned around. It was my diving instructor. And he was furious that I had wandered off alone and that on my first dive. So when it came time to choosing a career path, marine ecology was obviously the choice. But what if we could bring the knowledge of that exciting environment to you? What if I told you you could see and know what was happening under the sea and oceans right now? That technology exists. But if you had access to it, how would you use it? And to what end? You see, governments in the last decades, they've spent billions in building the infrastructure to capture information from the seas and oceans via marine observatories, sensors, gliders, drones, even satellite images. The amount of data that's coming from the seas is massive. We're talking about physical parameters like temperature, wind speed, oxygen and carbon dioxide levels, also biological parameters like how much algae and plants we have, how the fish and other animals are moving about. But was that a good use of taxpayer money? In other words, what are the average citizens getting from all of this? How much of that data is actually being used? In reality, not so much. The data or the information is oftentimes not easily accessible. If it is, if you're not an expert in the field, you might not know how to process it. And like I said, there's simply too much information coming in for the experts to process and know what to make of. But that, then, that information is not only useful to researchers and academics. I'll give you an example. I know some of you have already started planning your summer vacations. I know some of you are intending to go to a coastal city and spend their holidays swimming and sipping pina coladas on the beach. Very nice. But that would be extremely unfortunate if where you end up, the waters are stinky or there's a massive jellyfish swarm, right? But a water expert like me could access that data and produce up-to-date maps that you could use for planning your trip. Now, that would be very useful, wouldn't it? Or say you work in the energy sector and your company wants to build an offshore wind farm. Naturally, you'd want to build that wind farm where there's wind all year long to maximize the return on your investment. That information also exists. All you need is somebody to package it in a useful way for you. Or maybe you're a policymaker and you want to know the impacts of a proposed legislation on the ocean environment. Or perhaps to forecast future changes. What if the oceans keep on warming up by another two degrees in the coming decades? Will the current legislation be enough to protect these environments? You see, there's a very good opportunity here if all of these groups communicate and work together. If you, whoever you are, find a useful case for such information and come to us, water experts, tell us what you exactly need. We can then go access that data, analyze it, perhaps visualize it, and package it in a way that would cater to your exact needs. You could even bring in data scientists and engineers they could use machine learning tools and AI to forecast future changes and future what-if scenarios. What if all of this was available on an online hub or a marketplace 
where you could search for the data you need and purchase the services and tools you require to make better data-driven, accurate decisions. We at the American University of Armenia, along with 55 international partners, are building Iliad, digital twins of the ocean, digital copies of the ocean environments, if you will, where different entities, whether they are governments, academics, businesses, could search for the information they require and purchase whatever tools they want to make better decisions, to minimize losses, to ensure the safety or sustainability of our environments, and to be better prepared for what-if scenarios. I'll clarify what I mean with two pilots that our teams are working on. The first example I want to bring is the case of the port of Varna in Bulgaria. As you can see from the image, the entry channel to the port is very narrow. Moreover, the area experiences foggy weather often, which makes navigation into and out of port very treacherous. For safety reasons, at times like this, navigation is suspended. But this leads to long delays and also economic losses. To circumvent all of this, our team is working to develop a technology where vessel operators could wear specialized headsets and could receive signals from all nearby objects. And via augmented reality, they could navigate their way through in and out of port like they were playing a video game, but in real life. No delays, no accidents, no losses. The second example I want to bring is about oil spills. Assume there was an oil spill along the coast of Greece. What do people usually do when they see such a thing? They tweet about it. So to take advantage of this very bizarre behavior, our team is developing an algorithm which scrapes Twitter regularly for specific keywords. And when these keywords occur and pop up regularly, it activates a program whereby it checks satellite images to check if there was an actual oil spill in that location and then collects meteorological data like wind speed and current speed and direction to forecast how that oil spill will spread around. Then the authorities are notified of how the oil spill is forecasted to move and they can jump in and mitigate the negative impacts. You see, these are only two examples of how such a technology could be very useful in increasing security, cutting down costs, increasing the sustainability of our planet, and also getting us better prepared for any future what-if scenarios. But the sky, or rather the seas here, is the limit to their applicability. It doesn't matter who you are, or where you are, or what your profession is, you could find something useful on such a platform. And I'm sure if you think hard and very creative enough, you might even find solutions to add to big international contemporary problems. All that's missing is your interest and your brilliant minds. But now, having helped move this technology forward, I find myself in front of even a bigger personal problem. You see, I said in the beginning of this talk that I wanted to work outdoors. But now all I need, all the information that I need is at my fingertips, in my office, even in a landlocked country like Armenia. So how am I to justify to my employers that I need to be outside or to travel to beautiful seascapes? Whoops. Although, given the myriad amazing opportunities such a technology will open up, I guess that's a very good problem to have. Thank you. <laughs>